understand what it's like to be from the South, you know. I have wondered if maybe the past few years in this country might help people from elsewhere to understand what it's like to be from the South, because now America is the South of the rest of the Western world, right? I, <laughs> Like, I don't care if you're from Portland, Minneapolis, San Francisco, as far as France is concerned, you Mississippi now. Well, we're like, <laughs> we all the same dumb in the eyes of the world. Some of them are aware of it. I've met some Californians concerned with our reputation abroad. They'll be like, you know, I don't even want to travel lately, you know, because I know I'll go somewhere, they'll find out I'm an American, and who knows what they're going to think about me. And I'm just like, oh, yeah? Yeah, <laughs> you, uh... You worried that people from elsewhere might find out where you're from and make broad, sweeping assumptions about you? <laughs> yeah, that sounds terrible. <laughs> I don't know what I would do in that scenario. If you don't already know, this is Trey Crowder, a comedian that should definitely be on your radar. Who knows what they're going to think about me? And I'm just like, oh, yeah? Yeah, <laughs> you... Uh, you worried that people from elsewhere might find out where you're from and make broad, sweeping assumptions about you? <laughs> yeah, that sounds terrible. <laughs> I don't know what I would do in that scenario. Now, it'd be even worse for me, man. I get over there, some Frenchman's like, oh, Americans, they are all ignorant baguettes, huh? And I'm just like, who are you calling a baguette? Yeah, I know about your bread, Pierre. Because, <laughs> dude, like, growing up, rednecks and cops were like natural enemies, dude. They did not get along at all. You know what I mean? Like, I've, I, I spent my whole life surrounded by rednecks growing up. I've never once seen them react positively to a sudden police presence. <laughs> but now you got, today you got rednecks unironically being like two things I care about. Back in the blue and outlaw country music. <laughs> What? The, the most popular redneck show in the history of television was literally just about two cousin good old boys running from the law in a sweet ass orange car, right? The most popular redneck sport in America is based on running from the law. NASCAR. It's true. That's literally true. NASCAR was founded by moonshiners evading the law. Like rednecks turned driving drunk into a spectator sport, right? <laughs> Never got along, but ever since Black Lives Matter, now all of a sudden it's all back to blue. You know what I mean? I'll see somebody I went to high school with after some protesters get arrested or something. They're like, "Oh well, can't do the crime, don't do the or can't do the time, don't do the crime." Right? And I'm like, "Really, Randy?" Crowder is uniquely positioned to discuss the inherent hypocrisies of modern day issues of living in the South by self-identifying as a liberal redneck, and he's not afraid of mocking MAGA. This right here's the very spot where our fellow patriot Jimmy Taters got tased in the nutsack until he was dead. That's the same ambulance our buddy Randy got put in when he was trampled by Antifa. I, I thought it was Steven them. Huh? No, it was Antifa. Antifa sure does look like Steven them. Hey, ain't this where you called that police horse the N-word? Well, he was black. I know. Eventually, at long last, uh, all the other people, blacks, Muslims, the gays. The uh, trans. Yeah, of course. The, uh, the young people, the hippies, the Gen Z. The one that's just attracted to people's brains. Uh -huh, uh -huh. The, uh, vegans, environmentalists, the, uh, the ones that dress up like foxes but still have their d out. Yeah, of course. Then. Anyway, all of them eventually they will come to their senses and realize they cannot silence our people any longer. And finally, our voices will be heard in this country for a change. They're hanging Trump or death banners all over baseball games and stuff like that. And I saw that and I was like, oh, that's not culty at all. And how they're like, yeah, well, this is just because we entered into a ritual suicide agreement on behalf of the autocrat we've deified that doesn't make us a cult. If that is what y'all are saying, I just got one request. Okay, please, please, let me make the Kool-Aid, all right? I'm a trailer American, I know how to do it. I have, I have the ratios just right. Ah, uh, yes, supreme executive power, accountable to no one and above the law, just as our founding fathers famously favored. No, this argument is completely un-American, but it also doesn't make any sense. Like, if you listen to Trump and his people talk, he's like, all right, first off, I should be immune from prosecution for any of the stuff I did as president. Secondly, if I win this year, first thing I'm gonna do, prosecute Joe Biden for all the stuff he did as president. What? How does that work? Also, what stuff? And they're just like, 
border stu stuff involving Mexicans. Don't worry about it. Just, just stuff. Regardless of any disagreements you may have with Crowder's policies and analysis, it's undeniable that his work can help change the hearts and minds of people from similar backgrounds who continue to vote for Republicans and against their own interests. Additionally, so many Americans get caught up in the stereotypes of people from the South and people who speak with the thick Southern accents and forget or ignore that there are loads of progressives who feel underrepresented in their MAGA-controlled areas, which can be traced back to the erosion of public education and the whitewashing of Southern history. Well, things are getting a little secession-y down there in Texas, and I know what else is new. They do love to do that. We all know that threatening to secede is as much of a time-honored Texas tradition as 10-gallon hats and losing in the playoffs, baby. It's just what they do. For now, they're on one. And why, you ask? You know Mexican reasons. That's right. See, recently in GOP land, they realized that their election strategy of about how bad the economy was was being undermined by how not bad the economy was and they needed to pivot right is that xenophobia's music i hear you know it you know what time it is it's time to dress up like a cowboy head down to the border start putting up razor wire and calling the most desperate people on earth terrorists you get it the border's wild this is the republican playbook to a t there are infinite amounts of bogus culture war issues that republican officials can whine about when they run out of things to energize the voter base and more often than not racism and xenophobia are the most effective in mobilizing the base. Get wild on the border. See, according to Republicans, the crisis on the border is of an existential magnitude and Biden and the Dems won't do anything to fix it. That's what they say. Right? So recently, some of the Republican colleagues came into the office and said to leadership, hey, you know how we're always saying Biden and the Dems won't do anything to fix the border? Yeah, damn straight. Right, well, good news. We worked with Biden and the Dems to author a bill which would do something to fix the border. Isn't that great? You did what? What are you, stupid? Why would you, who is this guy? Why would you, you worked with the damn, dude, you never work with the damn, that's rule number one. No, I know, I know, I know, but we only worked with them to fix this problem we have for the American people. Yeah, that part's even worse, dude. Fix the problem, what are you, new here? We don't fix, if we fixed the problems, we wouldn't have anything to about, and then why would people vote for us? Use your head, man. Right? That's literally how they responded, but that's not all. At the same time they were doing that, they also filed articles of impeachment against Homeland Security Secretary Mayorkas for, you guessed it, not securing the border. Trey is spot on again here. While the Dems are abject failures in passing meaningful legislation to put the country forward, and Biden has continued Trump's draconian immigration policies, the Republicans are entirely based on passing as little legislation as possible unless it involves tax cuts for the rich or slashing business regulations. They need Need the overblown border crisis to keep going so they can campaign on it throughout the year. Once again, showing that both parties work for themselves and their benefactors, not the people who elected them. Be sure to check out Trey Crowder's work on his YouTube channel and other social media accounts, and please see him live if he's coming to a town near you.